everybody, welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be showcasing every single Create a Wrestler WWE action figure that I have made. I've made these on WWE action figure surgery. I've made these on Thinking Outside the Box, I think, mostly. And you guys know that some of these guys could end up in the MDDT developmental, you know, the My Damn Developmental Toys brand, which will be the NXT of the PickFed. So let's go ahead and dive in, guys. Let's go ahead and start off, and I'm probably in this video going to also show you, I mean, it's probably pretty obvious. Obvious, but I also want to showcase how to make your own, you know, create a wrestler. It's all about imagination. It's all about putting your mind together and trying to create some things. And I'm trying to, you know, not use paint as much as possible because I know some people don't have great painting skills. You know, not everybody has the supplies. I feel like, you know, not everybody can get to the things that they need to do to create some attire. So just creating the attires based off of part switching, I think, is the best approach. And it's the most creative, I think, without, you know, any paint or any sort of adding to the figures. So let's dive in with the GOAT, guys. We gotta start off with Flip Fokker. Now, Flip Fokker is not finished yet. I know I say it every single time I'm working on it, alright? I'm freaking trying to get this guy done, but I'm still working on the uh, the decals. I'm trying to get the decals done. Obviously, for this guy, I am gonna have to paint. Um, if you guys wanna make this guy without painting, I think you're gonna need a Cody Rhodes figure instead of a Buddy Murphy. That way you can get these, uh, the black tights or whatever. So you gotta get up in there and do all this blue stuff. Really not looking forward to that, but Flip Fokker, we made him on some random video. I think it was how to create a wrestler from MDT. This is going to be the first signee to the developmental brand. I don't know if anybody else in this video is going to be in the MDDT, but Flip Fucker's definitely on there. He's the first one ever made. I did a hair swap with him. I got the blue sleeve. I created him on 2K, and uh, his finishing moves are the fuck and flip and the fuck you. So I'm really excited to have Flip Fucker a part of it, and I can't wait to finish him, guys. When we when we finish him, we're definitely going to do a full video on it, and I'm super excited to do so. But let's move on to the next one, guys. We got another one with a Matt Hardy head sculpt, and I don't have names for any of these guys, okay? So I'm gonna need your help down in the comment section below, but I felt that this head sculpt with the ponytail worked pretty well for this body. You got a jacked up guy. He's got some jacked arms. You got the Cesaro tights with the no knee pads and the white boots. I thought this looked like a pretty standalone creator wrestler. Obviously, it's a Matt Hardy head sculpt, but none of the rest of him is Matt Hardy, so I feel like you can get away with that, especially when you're part switching and stuff. That's the best part of creating your own. You're probably wondering why I cut my finger right here and I don't know why I cut my finger but it was bleeding profusely and I was like damn I need to stop that because one time I was playing basketball and I got cut in this same spot and it kept going and going and going and it would not freaking stop so I said F that Brad I'm not letting that happen again I'm putting a damn band-aid on safety first Brad but there's a second guy honestly flip Fokker is a lot better than this guy I'm not huge on his design but you know what we'll just continue through the video this next guy has sort of like a I, I don't know on video it doesn't it doesn't necessarily seem as big but for this guy I was trying to go for that John trademark style where you have the tattoos on the upper arms and then no tattoos on the lower arms to try to give him his own unique look he doesn't have any shoulder tattoos I wish he had some Randy Orton tattoos or something but Ric Flair and HBK put together and some uh, Randy Orton upper arms this Tatanka head sculpt is a little bit too big and it sits a little too low to be honest with you I feel like straight on you really can't tell that much but when he looks to the side you guys can see he looks like a damn bobblehead bro and I'm not big on it, but you know, I really liked the uh, the red mohawk in the middle, or it's not necessarily, it's a mohawk into like a mullet, basically. But I like the fact that he had the red hair. I'm definitely going to have to switch out his head sculpt, which is kind of unfortunate because I really like that. Maybe whoever he ends up being can have some red paint in his hair or something. And I'm guessing if I don't sign all of these guys, I'll definitely try to use their parts for the developmental brand. And I'll probably use their, uh, what they look like, trying to translate that into the pick fed, even though I already know pretty much what all the guys are supposed to look like. We even did a video on that. But let's move on to the next guy. We have this JBL Kenny Omega hybrid type guy, which I think looks great. You know, he kind of looks handsome. He kind of looks like a dickhead heel. And I really like the arms built on this guy. I like the blue tights. You got the white kick pads. You got the silver tying into everything. And just the silver here ties into the silver here. The white and everything. I know it says elite, so it's kind of like he's freaking taking over Kenny Omega's attire, but I really like this guy as well. So uh, I, I'm going to plug him in here. We made him on one of those freaking videos. I'm not sure. I feel like this guy's kind of a technicality. Actually, let's go ahead and bring in all the technicalities right quick because I want to knock all these guys out together because uh, they're kind of, te technically, they're not creator wrestlers, but technically they are. So I want to get them all on screen here and then you guys can uh, tell me what you guys think here. So I'm bringing them all in. So let's go ahead and get them all in here because I want you guys to see them. So first on the right, we do have Ho Ho Jose. Now the reason I call him that is because this is a Godfather base and then we put the No Way Jose head sculpt on it. The 
skin tones match. I love the green pants, and I think it's hilarious because he is Jose, and then the Godfather had the hose, so you call him Ho Ho Jose. That is genius to me. I think that's genius, or you could just call him Jose, except it'd be H O S E with like a hyphen, and then you have your little apostrophe or whatever the hell. But Ho Ho Jose, technically not a creator wrestler, but he's kind of a meme that I put together, and I figured he'd be hilarious for the MDDT, so I went ahead and stuck him in the video. Thought that'd be a pretty good plug. Next up, we have our Vladimir here, but uh, then again, it's not the right body, right? It's not the right body. Of course, the head sculpt, but I feel like you put him on a different body, and it could work. He's not as tall. He's not as ripped up, and I think it could work for its own creator wrestler. If you guys have any ideas down in the comment section below on that guy, I think that could work if we really wanted it to. Maybe you could even switch a few more parts. On our next guy, we do have the Ultimo Dragon, which it doesn't have to be Ultimo Dragon. It's just what he was originally supposed to be, and if you're trying to create your own, you know, unique look for him or name for him, all you gotta do is rename him. It's not that big of a deal. You got the white boots, you got the scales, the dragon scales, you got the mask. You got your black sleeve here. I mean, this is a really unique one, man. This is, this is, could easily be anybody you wanted it to be. It does not have to be Ultimo Dragon, so I figured that could work. Same thing goes for, uh, for Grand Metalik right here. Of course, we did put the skin tone legs on there instead of the tights legs, and this boot is super loose. What the hell is up with that, Brad? What the hell is even that? But anyways, he kind of looks like a gobnob, to be honest. It looks like his shorts are going up his asshole. And, you know, it's obviously Grand Metal League, but if you really wanted to change it up a little bit, you could, you know, hack the ponytail off if you wanted. You could change out the boots, maybe the arms or something to give him a different look. But I feel like he's different enough, you know. You could, you could easily make that work if you wanted to. And then finally, we have this creator, Cedric Alexander, that was made by BEW way before we got the official Mattel figure because I'm such a big Cedric Alexander fan that I wanted to have an elite of him. And obviously, his tights are Cedric Alexander, but the head sculpt, just because it looks similar to him, it also looks similar to Xavier Woods with a different haircut, so this could pass by anybody. It doesn't even have the Cedric tattoo, so mixing him together with a bunch of parts, you could get a unique wrestler, so it doesn't necessarily have to be Cedric Alexander. That is the reason I put him in here. Literally, with all the talent we got in this video, guys, we could make a whole division and brand out of all these guys if we wanted to, but I do want to get more unique with it and stuff, which brings me to my next figure, which is this Drew Drew McIntyre figure base with all white. You got the white hand tape. It's like a tall, skinny guy, but he's pretty ripped up. His legs and torso, his arms need to catch up with him, but the all white with the smoothed out Cody Rhodes boots on there, and then the obvious Drew McIntyre tights and knee pads. This is just a really tall, big guy. Uh, I'm thinking like a dominant Djokovic type deal with this guy. You know, big kicks, big flips, really athletic kid, and I thought that would be really nice. Next up, we have a big muscle guy. This is sort of like your right back of the group. You got a really massive guy. I don't know what the hell you could call it. Maybe the Patriot or something like that. Obviously it's a head scan from Sting, the Great American Bash defining moment Sting figure but Kurt Angle arms on this Tatanka body with the Kurt Angle knee pads. The, I think it's Arn Anderson or Tully Blanchard boots and then you have the face paint of America. I really love this figure because it all comes together using so many different parts. The only thing that can make it any better is probably using like a Lex Luger base which would have you know like the Elite 30 tights with the American I thought that would be pretty sweet nasty, but I am liking the way this guy looks. He could throw kids all around the ring and stuff, so I really enjoy that guy. He's probably one of my favorite ones because he just ties together so freaking well. Um, let's move on to our next guy, which is this Jack Swagger tall lean kid. Um, honestly, it should probably switch the arms on this guy and that guy, but I think when I had these arms on that guy, it looked odd or something. I feel like we tried that first or something and it didn't work uh, because his legs are very small. He's a little bit leaner, but his arms are bigger than that guy. But I feel like this this kind of works, you know, DB on the on the freaking knee pads and RF on the boots. So I, I don't know what this guy's got going on, but I really like uh, the way he looks. It's not it's not the greatest attire or anything, but he is a creator wrestler that we've made, and his legs are so damn loosey goosey fart bags that you can just throw them out the damn window. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we have a creator wrestler that uh, supposedly it was supposed to be this guy. This guy was supposed to be the first one. This uh, Rich Swan head sculpt was supposed to go on this figure, but I could not find my Rich Swan head sculpt at that time, so we went ahead and went with the Darren Young, and I really don't like the Darren Young head sculpt on this body. I don't know what it is. I do 
like the way the Rich Swan guy looks with the Cedric Alexander arms and the Kofi, you know, tights right here and the white kick pads and white knee pads. This is probably one of my favorites out of the creator wrestlers outside of Flip Fokker, obviously, and then um, outside of the Patriot over here. I really like this guy. I don't know what the hell you could call him. I, I mean, maybe I could like, maybe you could take off the FI or the or the K and the I and make it O for offer. I, I don't know. I'm just trying to pitch ideas here. No designs on the back. He, of course, does have the tattoos from Kofi, which is inevitable, but then you have the Cedric Alexander bicep tats, and I just love the way the white kick pads and knee pads look with the orange tights and the rich one head sculpt on this body. I think that's freaking fantastic. The Darren Young is sort of the similar parts, but he does have the Neville knee pads and Shelton Benjamin kick pads, which tie into the gold on the tights, which I thought was pretty genius for the time. And then we have our last guy, which is a Dolph Ziggler, practically. It is a Brian Pillman body, so it is a little bit different. Um, I would probably paint his hair black or something. I'm thinking this is going to be the base of uh, Pretty Boy Sean O'Reilly. He'll have like some nice gloves. He'll have the zebra print. He's got white boots. He looks pretty badassery. So this is probably going to end up being Pretty Boy Sean O'Reilly. But I think that is all our creator wrestlers that I've ever made. Let's go ahead and count them up real quick. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 guys. I mean, that's a division right there. I don't care what anybody says. That is a full division that you could easily create right now. But we got to get all the details, man. I got, oh my God in heaven. What have we done here today? All right, I got them all back up. But uh, I think that's pretty much it that I wanted to show you guys here today. And I also wanted to let you guys know how you can make your own really quick. So let me go ahead and grab some boxes. All right, guys. So obviously, this is the loose thinking outside the box box. And pretty much what you want to do is just take any of your figures, any of your WWE Elite figures. If you have random parts from part switching or you have any guys laying around, you want to make your own figure fed, whether it's a hand fed, you know, a simulation fed, a actual pick fed, or, you know, you're just messing around having action figure matches, whatever the hell the case is. If you want to make your own cre uh, create a wrestler guy, just take a random parts, you know, just take your random stuff you got going on. Take this, go over to your fodder boxes, which we've taken a look at, and you're just going to get creative with it, man. Make sure the colors match or try your best to make the colors match or make sure they go together so that they're complementary. Get that realism going. Sometimes you don't have a choice but to make some wacky AF attire like something like this. Like, that doesn't match at all. But you know what? I was just messing around, switching around parts with it. But, of course, you would take all those little figure parts and you would match them with your fodder boxes. And getting in your fodder boxes with all your different boots and your tassels and your freaking arms and everything, your head sculpts, and you're just going to mix those together and see what you can come up with. I mean, that's pretty much what we do in WWE action figure surgery, unless I just know that something's going to work out and I try to put the ideas in my head. And we do that on action figure appointment. We do it on thinking outside the box. I mean, that's the whole point of the series, and that's my whole part of, of the entire community and hobby with WWE figures is putting parts together, putting them together, and trying to come up with something brand new, trying to come up with something creative and something unique without having to, you know, do too much thinking. Just, you know, a quick little acetone, a quick little boot swap, a quick little arm swap. Fixing up, mixing and matching figures is my favorite thing to do with them, and I hope I hope I have inspired you guys to do the same with your collections, and here today, I would love to see some creations in my DMs. I would like to see some emails of some creator wrestlers you guys have made switching parts around. If you guys have submitted your fantasy custom, I'm still mulling through all of them. There are so many entries, so if I have not gotten to your DM, do not, you know, be upset. I'm trying my best to get through all of them. There's so many DMs, guys. Like, even if I read all my DMs, Instagram has a glitch where it still says I have 100, and even if I read messages sometimes, it doesn't even say that I read them, and it's really stupid because I have so many messages. It's kind of freaking ludicrous. But anyways, guys, I'm getting the hell out of here. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Comment down below what you think of all these creator wrestlers. Who's your favorite? Mine's obviously Flip Fokker. Soon to be revealed of his finishing moves. You know the names, but you don't know what they look like yet, Brad. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at My Damn Toys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.